Hi! Today is the day of the eclipse, Monday, August 21st, 2017. Since my family is completely out of the house, I, I have the house entirely to myself, I decided to go ahead and film in my nice happy room. And, um, yeah, my hair is a mess, <laughs> my makeup's a mess, and my, after the last couple of videos, my health really dumped out on me, but I'm having potassium problems. But thankfully, I got my hands on some potassium, and it's making me feel better, good enough to be able to do this, even though my mouth is drier than a rug. I'm going to go ahead and do some readings here. I decided that one of the things that I wanted to do for this channel was introduce people to some of the stuff that I find on the internet that has especially spoken to me that I, I know I'm sure will speak to you too and will speak to quite a lot of people. Stuff that has helped me out which I'm, I hope will definitely help anyone that watches this out too. And even though this is dark and serious subject matter, I decided to film it in a nice happy room. So, there we go. This first one is on a website called thenourishinggourmet.com. Beautiful food made simple. And it was written in March 31st, 2014 by Kim Harris. I like it. It's a really good article. Uh, I'll post the link in the description under the video. That's about it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the thing to you now. Granted, that's going to mean me looking down and whatnot, you know. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do my best not to entirely keep my eyes on the screen. I'm going to at least try to look at the camera. So, so here we go. To the suffering undiagnosed, I know you aren't crazy, even if no one believes you. An open letter to the misunderstood and undiagnosed sick. The nourishing dot, the nourishing gourmet dot com. And I just want to say to begin with here that this article and uh, another pile of comments that I'm going to read to a totally different uh, video on YouTube that has nothing to do with this, but. The, this writing and those writings, um, I identify with them so much, it's incredible, which is why I'm reading this. But I hope that whoever watches this video can identify with these writings also, and it'll help you. So, Dear Undiagnosed Sufferer, I know you are not crazy. An open letter to the misunderstood and undiagnosed sick. TheNourishingGourmet.com what if you were suffering from an illness that was slowly ruining your life, or even shortening your life, and everyone around you told you that you were just fine, quote-unquote, and that, quote, everyone feels a little off and tired now and then, unquote? What if you were in terrible pain or deep fatigue and everyone said it was just in your head? Yep. There can be tragedies and health issues that we understand fairly well, and most can certainly be compassionate and merciful towards those suffering under them. But there are other illnesses that are not well understood or understood at all. There are kinds that don't affect your outward appearance and your longevity, and so people assume, quote, it's not that bad, unquote. Worse yet, there are those given a clean bill of health by their physician. Yet they know that something is deeply wrong within themselves. Their doctors, friends, and family can brush off their complaints. Doctors can underdiagnose or say that it's all in their head. But they are suffering deeply, and it only makes their suffering deeper when no one seems to understand. Illustrated through Lyme disease. I've been thinking about this issue a lot as a dear friend of mine is battling Lyme disease. There was a wide range of severity to the disease, and her case is on the more extreme side, especially considering that she's probably had it for about 10 years without being treated or diagnosed. At this late stage, there has been horrible pain that even the strongest pain medication can only alleviate so much. As her husband, family, and friends have gathered to help with her treatments, take her to doctors, love her, pray for her, and give her compassion and help whenever she has needed it, 
It has brought a flower of hope in the middle of great suffering. What makes my skin crawl is that Lyme disease, with all the horrible, painful symptoms it can produce, was and is even still so underdiagnosed. Patients suffering what my friend is now suffering have been told, quote, you need psychological help, not physical help, because it's all in your head, unquote. No pain medication, no real compassion or understanding, just judgment while you walk through a valley of pain with little hope. If advanced Lyme disease wasn't an early hell enough, surely being untreated and misunderstood and judged makes it even more so. It makes me wonder how many people today are still in that position. Perhaps their health condition is undiscovered still, or perhaps they aren't diagnosed yet, despite attempting to get care. Perhaps a doctor hasn't been able to fit the confusing individual symptoms to the true cause yet. And so they suffer on with little knowledge of what is really wrong and little hope. Illustrated through my story. Sometimes this includes things not as serious as Lyme disease. For me, it was undiagnosed low iron. We suspect I was low since my high school years, but since I was able to pass with flying colors the most common test for anemia, I was never properly diagnosed despite my many symptoms of low iron. It was actually a fairly simple problem, but finding a solution was really hard. I was taken to several doctors during my high school years and given a clean bill of health each time. I started seeking help for myself when I started wondering if the bone tired feeling I had all the time and the frequent infections at certain points were normal. I did get some beautiful help from some excellent neuropaths, but still my energy was low, even if somewhat improved. When my blood tests showed that I was well nourished and quote healthy unquote, my continued fatigue and many signs of a slowed thyroid function were, sh uh, were shrugged off. Hints of being a little hypochondriac were implied. I had a hard time helping friends around me understand how badly I felt and how tired I was when I looked fine on the outside and functioned fairly well despite the fatigue. By this time, I had learned to trust the distress signals my body was sending me, and I knew all was not well. But it was livable for the moment, and I had run out of options and ideas. Years later, I found myself increasingly dragging, my hair falling out rapidly, and an even greater fatigue that I was no longer able to fight through. I thought I was dying. I sought help again. Found a doctor that took me seriously. Got better and more thorough lab testing done for me and through that discovered I was deeply iron deficient, which was also unbalancing other parts of my body as well. Wow, this isn't even my writing, I'm starting to cry. <laughs> and I was deeply grateful for two things, being treated with compassion by a doctor that believed me when I said I felt awful and felt something was wrong. And secondly, finding out what was wrong. It was a comforting hope. No longer did I beat myself up for not having the energy I needed for a well-rounded life. I understood myself better and was able to give myself grace for the reality of my situation and hope for a better reality soon. I wonder how many out there suffer like I did, with undiagnosed nutritional imbalances or deficiencies, who are shrugged off by their doctors, treated as lazy or crazy, or both by friends or family and who wonder themselves whether or not everyone feels as bad as they do, but are just able to put a better face on about it. That's me right there to a T. If you are in that position, 
here are some words for you. I just want to apologize right now for how terribly I'm reading this, but this is so important to me, despite my bad reading of it. I gotta get it out. I gotta let everyone know about this. It's important. If you are in that position, here are some words for you. An open letter. Dear undiagnosed sufferer, I know it's not just in your head. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you didn't get the help and compassion you need from finite humans. I am sorry that doctors don't understand, don't listen, don't know, don't run proper tests, or give you the resources you need. The fact is, no matter how many strides we make in health and science and in treating people, there is still a lot more to learn. And sometimes unfortunate ignorance, health issues yet discovered, or perhaps still misunderstood diseases create a double victim. It creates bleh. I'm gonna just look at this instead of the camera. The fact is, no matter how many strides we make in health and science and in treating people, there is still a lot more to learn. And sometimes unfortunate ignorance, health issues yet undiscovered, or perhaps still misunderstood diseases create a double victim. It creates victims of a health problem and a victim of misunderstanding and judgment. They, ha they have a typo there, so I'm going to read that sentence again. It creates a victim of a health problem and a victim of misunderstanding and judgment. That's better. There is nothing I can say to make that reality better, but I want you to know I understand what it's like to be there and feel those things. I understand the helplessness it can produce and the heartache and continual physical pain you can walk through. I understand the self-doubt and self-condemnation, the frustration when you try to move on in life but just can't. Because we aren't all-knowing and because we have so much to learn still, I can't promise a better tomorrow. That really hurts. Yet. Yet. My word to you is still this. Don't give up. Don't give in to despair. Help may be just around the corner. Help may just be around the corner. Keep looking for answers. I've found so many good and compassionate doctors and I've come to realize that not all have the same knowledge on the same things. While it took time and created hardships financially, not giving up and continuing to see doctors and looking for answers often bears fruit for many of us. That's my story and the story of my friend with Lyme and other readers here too. I can't guarantee that will be your story, but there is hope there still. We may not have all of the answers yet, but I am continually amazed at what we do know and the current research that there is. I'm not saying it's easy or that it always works out how we want. We've lost a child which modern medicine couldn't save despite much promise. We've lost a parent which alternative care and a very healthy lifestyle couldn't save, also despite much hope. It can be easy to say, tomorrow we die, so eat, drink, and be merry. I will say this lady is an excellent writer because uh, I usually ever cry from my writing or written published books and poetry, but man, of course I haven't really read any published poetry. Anyway, I say enjoy today. If I can just get this out without crying. Relish it and be glad for it. No matter what lies in stock for us tomorrow, 
but also see the beauty in the fight for a better future as well. It's not only armed forces that fight wars. It's not only the scientist, the neuropath, the doctor that fights the war against illness. Often the first step towards getting better is fighting for hope. And with that hope, fighting for answers and not giving up, not giving in to despair. I'm going to take a break here for a minute. My voice is gone. Now I just want to say that this part of the article on my Kindle, that's what I'm reading. Now I just want to say that this part, I don't ascribe to it because I'm, I'm not into this religion, I'm not a part of this religion, but this is part of the article, so I'm going to go ahead and read it anyway. And if I may, a word to my Christian readers. What a relief to know that our final hope is not in whether we find the answers we need for healing our earthly bodies. What a hope we have that even if we lose an earthly battle against sickness, lose against receiving compassion and care from others, and finally lose hope for wellness here. What a relief to know that better things, that a whole unpainful future awaits us, bought with the precious love and sacrifice of Christ. We find love and care even now from this, and true healing awaits us. That is the hope against all hopes worth fighting for. That's pretty amazing. I can't believe that. My heart and soul just can't, and it doesn't. So. But there you go to all the Christian readers, or listeners in this case. In closing, there is so much pain and hurt in the world, but there is also so much beauty and hope as well. Find that beauty and hope wherever you can and enjoy and savor them. While there are always dark times and sorrow in our lives, there are also times of great joy and ability to continue fighting well. So fight on, dear friends, and may tomorrow bring more joy. With hope of better futures for many of you, love, Kimi. I hope I pronounced her name right. K-I-M-I, -I, Kimi. <laughs> Last thoughts. I'm not discounting that there are never those with purely psychological issues that cause them to feel sick and ill. I simply think that it's unfortunate that those with very real and treatable diseases can be misdiagnosed with that. However, even situations where the origins lie purely in the brain, they should be given compassion and love and care, as those illnesses are real in the minds and lives of those suffering under the mental pain of thinking they are sick. Those suffering mental illnesses should be given the same compassion and care as those with other physical illnesses. And that's it. Once again, uh, I did not write this. This is by someone called Kim Harris or Kimmy Harris. And it's off the nourishinggourmet.com. 
and it's such an excellent article. I absolutely had to read it. I hope I did it justice. I hope it. I hope I did it some kind of justice. I know I'm, you know, I think I can be pretty good at reading, but I'm so incredibly, I've never done this before. So I'm extremely unpracticed and extremely unskilled. This is the first time in my life I've ever done this on camera. So I think for my own non-existent or anti-skill level, I, I did a good job, but uh, whether or not I did the article any justice, I don't know. I hope I did. I tried to. I tried very hard to. Um, and I read it with the best of my ability. So, but anyway, and and I'm sorry, Miss Kimmy Harris, uh, if if I completely mutilated your name. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. But, uh, I'm just glad I'm feeling physically better at the moment. That's all I can think of. And I am I am so grateful for this article that I managed to come upon. And I am so grateful for the absolute swath, just tons of uh, comments off of this uh, YouTube video that I'm going to read next in the next video. And, you know, thank you Kimmy Harris for writing this. I needed to read that. So, if no one else, you at least touch me. I am a reader. And thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. And I just hope that I, along with everyone else who is suffering, manages to get better. So, despite how we look. <laughs> or even act. But I'm just glad that I'm well enough today to even do this, so. They say enjoy life while you're alive and you have it, but it's, you can't enjoy life at all. It, life is a torture when you're physically ill. It's a terrible damnation. And it's a twofer if you have mental illness along with physical illness. And as much as I hate to admit it, I, I have, you know, rightfully so because of the circumstances and situations I'm living in in my life, but uh, I've, I've suffered terribly from depression, you know, rightfully so, but still. And I have found that being mentally healthy, it's like your mental health can either can grab your physical body and either pull it up, whether it be ripping it up quickly or pulling it up ever so slowly, and it can help your health, or it can grab your physical body and make your health that much worse and pull you down if you're really physically ill. I've been getting really shocked here lately at how much your mental health, how depressed you are, or how or how happy you are, can affect how physically healthy you are, and vice versa. I've been really shocked at how your physical health, you know, can really affect how depressed you are mentally. For me, it doesn't really affect me too much mentally until I get really bad sick, but then I'm so sick that I don't really have enough brains to even care that I'm depressed, you know? I, I've been sick my whole life, but as of late I've gotten deathly ill, and I've been, I've been really shocked at how much, you know, your emotions can really just affect your physical body and whether or not, whether or not you're even able to fight or willing, you know, whether or not you're willing to fight and whether or not you're even able to fight your own physical body and just like crawl off to the shower, you know? So, anyway, I ruined my throat doing that and I ruined my mouth because my mouth is dry as all heck, but I'm glad I read it. Bye.